In this video, we'll quickly learn how to create 3D text in Inkscape. We'll start with the text tool and type in whatever text you want. We'll do TJ Free. I'm TJ Free, by the way. I teach about free and open source software if you're not familiar with my channel. Uh, we'll change the font and we'll add it to heavy bold. We're going to go ahead and click this icon here to lock. When we scale, this will make it so it scales uniformly on the X and Y axis. So we can scale our text up without getting it all distorted and stretched. And then you can change the color by clicking on any color here at the bottom. So we'll go with a blue. And then we're going to right click and go to duplicate. Now we have a duplicate text on top. We'll change the color of this second duplicated text. And we're going to left click and hold and lower it down and to the right a little bit. And this will be the back of our 3D text. We'll lower it down to the lowermost level using these controls up here so that it's behind the blue text. And then we'll go to Path, Object to Path with the blue text selected. And also we'll go to Object, Ungroup. This turns the text into a path and then Ungroup separates each letter so that we can adjust the shape of each letter. We'll repeat these same steps with the black text behind. And now we can uh, get in and adjust these um, as paths with the Edit Paths by Node tool. Um, we want to make sure snapping is turned on. So over here on the right-hand side, make sure this icon is clicked so that we can snap to these corner nodes between these different shapes now. And we'll get into this Bezier Curve tool. And we're going to draw connecting shapes between the blue and black letters. So on the corner here, we'll just left-click on the, when we get this X to appear. That's what the snapping does. We'll just left click on these nodes and then we'll complete the shape. Now it won't, we could turn snapping on to the, the edge too. We just have node snapping on right now. If we, if we go into fill and stroke, we can turn uh, in the stroke paint, click the X to turn the stroke off of this shape so there's no stroke. Then go into fill and turn the fill on. And we can change the color of this. We'll get in and adjust the color later, but we'll do it a darker blue so it appears to be like a, a shadow underneath this part of the letter T. And we'll repeat these same steps over and over again on every letter. So on the right side of this T here, we draw sort of a 3D rectangle shape, turn the stroke off, add a fill, and change the color. And so I'll speed up the video now because these proce this process is very repetitive, but we'll get into some parts that are a little bit more tricky. And, it, and we're filling in these gaps to create this 3D shape. Now on the J here, like I said, it's a little bit different. Here, all we need to do is this top and then the bottom. We don't need to actually do the curve because it already has a solid color touching up against it. And then we'll just get in later and change the color of this black. But we need to adjust. We can come in and subtly adjust these by using these handles. This is the Edit Paths by Node tool that we're using over on the left-hand side. Um, if you're not familiar with that, you may need to brush up a little bit on skills using that. Um, for the rest of this, we'll just speed through very quickly, and it's just drawing simple shapes. Unless your letter has a curve, you won't have to use the Edit Pass by Nodes, but it, those curves aren't too hard either. You can either click on the line to bend it, or you can use those handles to create the bends. Don't worry too much about the colors right now, because like I said, each one of these is their own separate path. So we can get in later and change the coloring to make sure that they're, uh, like the side is different from the top shade, for example, and the entire color can be changed altogether. Like here, we can create it more jagged at first, and then we can get in and adjust it later at, with those nodes. So just click, you know, fill it in roughly, and then we can always come in and fine tune it. We'll come back to this J and add that in. With the E, since we have two E's, we only need to do this process once, and then we can duplicate. Anytime you have the same letter, you can duplicate it. If we hold down the Shift key and left click to select all these different faces, then we can just uh, drag them and move them over together. We can adjust the shadow underneath the letters, and we can do this also by holding down the Shift key because all of our under shadows are going to be the same color. So hold down Shift, left click on the under parts of the letters, and then change them to a darker color. Really gives it more of a shadow look and that 3D depth look. One more thing we can do to add this 3D is we can hold down the Shift key and select the faces of each letter. We'll go to right click, duplicate. We'll change this to black, and we're going to create a shadow. So we'll go into the blur and we'll blur this black and then we'll go to group and we can lower it down to the lower level and place it behind this text. And now it looks like it's sort of floating there in space and has a shadow projecting uh, behind it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any and I look forward to catching you in the next video.